Good afternoon. Are you here about the job? Are you looking to be the apprentice for the blacksmith shop? If you are, I need to talk to you. I need to have you come in because I'm looking for somebody that can be work as an apprentice and you're going to work here for five years and then I'll certify you as a blacksmith. Now I can't pay much. You get to live in the cabin with me. I'll give you a suit of clothes each year and I'll give you a little bit of spending money. But what you'll do, you'll get up first thing in the morning before we come to work. You'll start the fires, you'll bring in the water, the coal, and then clean up at night for us, as well as learn all the tricks and trades of blacksmith. Come on, I'll show you about it. Come on in. can't work cold steel. It just doesn't bend, it doesn't shape the way it should. A lot of people confuse blacksmiths with goldsmiths and silversmiths. Well, a blacksmith works with iron and steel, and that metal is dark colored, dark gray, or black. That's why they call him a blacksmith. You probably know, we shoe horses. We also make metal tools and refix metal tools that are broken. Lady brought this in this morning. It's an iron. Well, she broke her handle off. So I've got to fix that for her. Well, I've got one here that I fixed earlier where I replaced the handle on it. As he's turning that crank, air is being pulled into that hole. Now the air gets shuttled down through a tube and comes up through the fire. Watch what happens when he starts turning the crank a little bit harder. You can see what, how it's getting hotter. It's getting to a white or a blue heat. When he stops turning the crank, it'll come back down to an orange heat. That's where we heat up the steel, because you can't work cold steel. You know, I can't bend cold steel. I have to have an anvil. Now this is called a London pattern anvil. This is the most common blacksmith anvil. But for special jobs, I've got other types. You can see over my shoulder, I've got a saw blade from a saw mill. Well, when people bring those blades into me and they want them straightened, I've got to use a Sawyer's anvil. And this is something that lets you straighten up saw blades. This is my stump anvil because it's got a hole in a stump and I can take this any place, just drop it into the hole and work on it. It's a lot easier to take this little thing, which weighs about 60 pounds, than it is to try and take my 250 pound big anvil over here. This is an S-hook, all right? And an S-hook's used in all sorts of places, in the cabins and in the fireplaces to hang pots from. You can hang your hat. So we're gonna try making an S-hook. I want that steel to be a light orange color. If it's the red color, it's too cool to work. Now what we're doing is we're making the taper on the top of an S-hook. Got that done, now we'll heat it up again. You know what a pigtail looks like? We're gonna curl this up just like a pig's tail. Just like that. And when you get a curl in both ends, the next step is you've got to make a hook shape. A little bit hotter. All right. Now, I don't want to hit the top of this with a hammer because it'll deform it. So I'm going to cool it off real quick. Now I can start making that hook. I know you're going to look at this and you're going to tell me that first thing you see is this is not an S hook. It's a C hook. Well, the next step in this process is we're going to bend it and we're going to make it into an S shape. We're going to bring this over, mount it into the vise, lock it in. See how easy that is to twist without breaking it? It's all because we were able to get that piece of steel malleable.
All right, there's your finished S-hook.